Uh, welcome to After the Final Lap. I'm Chris Chavez, joined by Kyle Merber, Caitlin Hutchison in the house. After the Milrose games have wrapped up, what a meet. I mean, it's my favorite one of indoor season. Did not disappoint one bit. It was fully as hyped up as it could be. It delivered. And there's nothing that I want to do more after a track meet than kick back, talk with some of the athletes, my, my co-hosts, and drink an Olipop. Ooh, Olipop. Isn't it delicious? <laughs> I mean, it really is delicious. I mean, <laughs> it, it just your, your gut health feels great. After my gut health is through great. the roof. Uh, no. no, but actually, this is the lemon lime. I yeah. finally... It's only limited edition right now. It's not everywhere. Some not stores. on the online store yet. It's in Whole Foods right now. I'm, I told you I was a Sprite guy for years, so I'm in heaven. Give us a review. Give us a quick sip and a review. Well, I already drank <laughs> three quarters of it. Oh, wow. That's my first <laughs> sip. It's really good. No, it's delicious. All right. Uh, I'm drinking Tropical Punch. Get your hands on some Olipop. Go to drinkolipop.com. Hit the link in the description. And use code Sidious25 for 25% off. Inventory's been kind of low because we've been pushing Olipop. A lot of runners. A lot of runners. The official runner soda is Olipop. All right. So we're going to... We're coming in hot with a guest right out right the away. gate. Which is what I love uh, on After the Final Lap. Uh, last year, this show caused quite a bit of drama online. There, there was drama. Yeah, we did that. Um, the guy who was at the center of some of that drama wasn't even on the show. It was Ollie Hoare saying he outclassed, you know, last year's runner, uh, runner-up in the Wanamaker Mile. This year, the guy decided not to run the mile distance. He said he's going to move up now that he's a half marathoner. You know, he's, a, he's got an Olympic bronze medal in the 1,500 meters, but today he was testing himself out in the 3K. The one, the only, Josh Kerr. Josh, welcome to the show. Just ran 733.47 for the win. I mean, beat record, race. facility record. The facility record? Yeah. Let's go. That means that's you can have good. mail delivered here. That's that's the rule. Yeah, you I own this place that. now. Uh, so, Josh, first off, how are you feeling after that? Well, I might have to crack one of these. Oh! 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 An Olipop. Is that like a... Uh... I'm a virgin drinker, and so, you know, I, I want to try this out for the first time. Okay. Really? It's going to be honest review. All right. All right. All right. Tell you what, boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's an Ollie Bob guy. Go. <laughs> this is you know what I would love is that, like, you know, I, they sponsor him. Not yeah. the guy whose name is Ollie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh Kerr, get him a deal. Uh, so, Ollie Pop is refreshing, but the race, how was it? Uh, I have not run a 3K in, I think it's nine years. And so I took a minute and two seconds off my TV today. We were this was, this was very VR. This was controversial because Mac messed up the graphic yeah. and uh, had you at 8.53, uh-huh. so I'm rude. calling it like a minute and a yeah. half personal yeah. that. How rude. That might, we gotta Wait, be so this done. is the guy who made it happen? This is the yeah. guy! Yeah. Wait, yeah. I told Kyle, you. Kyle was going for you so hard last night, and I'm like, there's no way this dude's gonna drop like two minutes off the of VR. <laughs> <laughs> you just I know, I know the it's big, The big check conversion is that that big. We're not a BU here, all right? We're not a BU fuck. And then he freaking did it. It's <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. My 3K BB was kind of fun, but yeah, I think I ran one like just before I went to New Mexico. Uh, I think my most recent 3K is actually I ran 9 minutes 11 seconds, so. Yeah, this has been a big day for me. Yeah, um, huge. Well, so if we're going to go back, you know, in the calendar a little bit, the fields came out, and we were on the podcast, and we're talking about who's going to win some of these races, and it was right after you had run that half marathon, yeah. and I was hyping you up, and then Chris, is, we had to pick Chris's jaw up like, off the like, ground. Really? Uh, and, you yeah. said, to win? <laughs> And the old I've, takes exposed over here. Yeah. yeah, old takes. I mean, we have so many takes that inevitably, every now and then, one is going to be correct. And you are reveling, reveling in this, uh, in that yeah. prediction. You made a, you made his day. Yeah, I mean that was my goal. That's my. I, te- <laughs> I messaged him about it. I think you came out and said that you had me for the win, and I messaged you saying, "Listen, you bet on the right horse. I <laughs> promise you, training's going well. We're gonna get it." And so, you know, I had a ball out there. And to be honest, like, everyone's like, why didn't you run the mile? You know, why didn't you jump in there? And I got a message about this like four or five months ago. And Ray was Hate like, messages. Huh? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Ray was like, listen, the, the mile's shaping up. Ollie's going to go for something quick. We've got the on guys in there all trying to run their, you know, their national record. Months ago. This was months conversation ago. months ago. Months ago. Like October, November time. 
We and, wanted to uh, do like a you know HBO 24/7 type of documentary following both you and Ollie for the rematch, but then we got word that mm-hmm. that you were moving up to the PK. We and shelved those plans. Exactly. I was like, listen, I've got my national record. I've got the European record and the and the British record in the mile. Those guys aren't wearing the Brooks logo. I'm not here to be a rabbit for for these guys. I mean, obviously they didn't need it, but you know, I was I, I'm here to you know try and work on some of my weaknesses. And, you know, as, as a guy coming in with 835 PB, you know where my weaknesses are. <laughs> and so I just wanted to try something a little bit different this year. We had a little bit of a disappointing end to last year. Obviously moved up to the half, you know, panic. You know, I'm like, maybe I can be good at that now. Um, but, you know, I had, I had that, this plan for a long time. And I, I just, you know, it's like, they're like, oh, are you dodging people? I'm like, look at the 3K field. You tell me I'm dodging things. <laughs> But I just want to go out and win and, and uh, see how fast I could run. So I was pretty happy with yeah, that. Yeah, you're getting these messages from accounts that are just like gut thoughts, yeah. and <laughs> like coffee club yeah, drinkers, yeah, yeah, exactly. 92 or whatever it might be. But yeah, you shut them all up today. That was the big plan. I knew that uh, I probably had the, the best top speed, so I just needed to figure out how to use it. And I was out in lane two with like two laps to go. And I was like, all I could see in my head was like Danny lecturing me for the next two weeks, being like, you're out in lane two and that's why you were second. <laughs> and so I was like, I have to win or else I'm going to not hear the end of it. So I just, uh, I sent it and I knew that I had the wheels for it. That final 400 had to have felt good because it felt like a pure race. There were so mm. many guys still in contention. Yeah. I mean, that's what I want to get back to is like, <laughs> difficult in the 15 it feels like time trials but we don't really have many pacers even for that world champs and olympics it's just like balls to the wall you're going at it and so uh, it's nice to kind of have a little bit more of a tactical side and running 30 seems slow versus those miles okay so th- yeah like let me stop you right there yeah. running 30 seems slow you came through in 404 and after the race you were kind of saying like yeah we were kind of just chilling yeah it felt nice it felt <laughs> it's the same thing as the half it's like if you're going out and running 455 it's not too bad. If you're going out around 30s, it's a lot, a lot slower than running, I don't know what they were today, 27s or something. And so it's, I've been practicing my 30s. I feel like I've been doing that a lot in practice. And, you know, we've been getting ready for this one. This has been a big one for me. So I was talking to Luis afterwards, and, you know, you had the, the pole position, 200 to go. And he was kind of saying, like, I couldn't get around. I yeah. mean, I feel like every miler experience with that, you know, that Josh Kerr experience on an indoor track, you're a big guy. You run on, you take up a lot of lane one, you know, you run big. (laughs) Well, that's the thing is when I was warming down, I was about to do my session and some guy was like, how much do you weigh? And that's the biggest question I get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Generally, if you look at my Instagram, all it is is like how much. No one asked how much you can bench. Yeah, or exactly. squat. Like, come on. We like, gotta put him and Nicholas Harbour next to each other. <laughs> See how big Josh Kerr really like, is. I'm like, all right, so I had to like not lecture the guy. But I was like, listen, like, it doesn't matter how much I weigh. I'm not going to give you a number. I have heart. I have heart. I was like, listen, just stop fighting your body. He's like, I weigh 170. I'm like, that's okay. I weighed 176 last year for the Milrose Mile. And I weigh way less than that now. You know, when you hit the beers after the Olympics, it takes a little bit of time for that to come off. There's a whole body positivity mo- movement like, right now. That guy was having a heart to yeah. heart. He was like off in the, uh, the stands. Sometimes I, like, I look in the mirror. man, like, stop fighting your body. Like, this is important. You kind of laugh about it. I was like, no. I was like, you can be elite, and it yeah. doesn't matter. Stop fighting. Yeah. And he's like, oh. Stop worrying really about your body. Lot. It's your face, man. Yeah, <laughs> please. Come on. With some glasses on, and no one's going to no think about how much you weigh. It's okay. Well, yeah. I mean, now, like, I feel as a miler, if I'm looking at you, it's like, well, what do I do? Mm. How do I beat a guy who now has the 800 ability and is proven in that realm and now has found a way to extend himself up to the 3K. Does it remind you of someone who did that last year indoors and then came out with the World Championship gold medal outdoors? Can't think of anyone. Yeah. yeah. I, I can think of a 737 guy, but not a 733 guy. Up there in the 30s. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think, you know, Wyman had such an amazing year last year, and it was so inspirational for all the British athletes and even the Scottish athletes. It's just like... You know what? If we can, we were learning so much from Jakob and, and you know seeing the way he's working the 5K, and then obviously Whiteman made some made some different decisions last year when it came to the distances he ran. So we're always learning as milers because the paces are so quick. You've got to always be adapting and moving the training around. So yeah, running the 3K, I can I can guarantee you there's gonna be a lot of people the holiday half next year. That's all. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, say. I hear it's very downhill hey, though. Hey, if, well, to be honest, like the biggest thing for the half was like 
I thought my legs could buckle at any point. Like, at any point, I was like, my legs are going to fucking fall off. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. Um, <laughs> how many screws do you have to be missing <laughs> yeah. to, like, do this kind of stuff? Because you talking about your legs is going to be buckling, and you still racing. Like, and, and, and you thought it was a great idea mm-hmm. to go to the 3K. And you and like the half. You out, like but like yeah. <laughs> I, I actually had the, like, I made no money from the half. I made that decision on my own. You know, I was like, you know what? You guys? make money today? Made a bit of money at that. <laughs> a couple dollars. <laughs> but uh, no, I just I don't know. Like you just you know what's worse than the half is being fifth in the world. And so I do not want to experience that ever again. And I knew where my weaknesses were. And I was like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna focus on. And so yeah, it was really hard. But I had a I had a blast. And I will move up there some point in my career. I think. So the answer is 57 screws. Yeah, 57, 57 screws. That yeah. works. That's good with me. You pulled out the stat about the guys who have made the world championship and Olympic final over the last couple of years and that you're the only one missing the Olympic, uh, the gold medal. Yeah. Who pulled that stat out? Because that takes some digging to, to try and find. How did you notice it? I mean, like you're yeah. using that as motivation. This yeah, no, massively. I think, you know, that's like a coach and staff kind of thing. And also like, I'm, I'm a bit of a stat guy when it comes to like the, the top end guys. Um, I like to follow what they're doing and, just being aware and, and being able to adapt training. And so like Danny was, you know, we were talking about it before uh, Worlds of last year. And I was like, you know, it's me and Whiteman haven't, haven't got a gold yet. And he obviously got one. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not looking to finish my career without one. And so I'm trying everything that I can to just be the, at the best I can for the world championship final. And that's all I really care about um, this year is like, uh, do I think that I could run something really fast in a mile at like BU or something like that? Probably. Um, I think I'm in a better shape than I was last year. And so at that point, we're talking 47s. What uh, place would you have been today in that mile? That's a great... You know what? That's really hard because I didn't... From the training that I've been doing, I'm not too sure because I haven't really been training for the mile. So I know that I can go out and battle with some of the best in the world. So, you know, I think I, think I would have been up there, but... I'm not going to take away from those guys. Those guys worked super hard today. And uh, uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing them outdoors, personally. Uh, and, and hopefully they can continue to bring the heat and we can get some of the best races in the world in the U.S. soil and, and start pushing some fast times. You ran 359 for your last 1600 today. Really? Which is pretty good. At what point in the race were you like, I got this? Because there's definitely one moment, mm-hmm. and I think I saw it, but I want to hear from you. So, like, the whole time, I was, I was just kind of, I was like, okay, I'm in a good position. I don't want to be off the rabbit uh, because, you know, Cooper had a hard job today of, like, keep pushing it on. And he was pouring it on. It was good. But I think, you know, with three laps to go, I got antsy, and I started coming out. And I was like, you know what, let's just wait and, you know, really, really pour it on near the end. And uh, I'm going to try and make them run around me in the last 50. I'm going to come, come out a little bit onto, onto the line. And, and uh, I was just hoping no one was going to catch me. But, yeah, I think... You know, when, when you go, you got to go hard indoors, and it's hard to pass someone. So when I came around with a lap to go uh, on Luis's shoulder, I was like, I'm just going now. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to be in lane two. I'm just going to start pouring it on. So hopefully that was exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to watching it back. I guess like last year and over the last couple of years, we've just learned that when you sign up for a race, like it just you, you know Josh Kerr is going to show up and be ready because, you know, you, you're not racing week to week. You're putting basically – as many chips as you can into to these big races, what's next? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I know I want to run a 5K outdoors. I don't know if I want to run any more indoors. Uh, I'll, back to a training block, really, because, again, it's about outdoors. Why the 5K? And, you know, you run 1323. thing is, like, that used to be good. <laughs> it's not that good. That sucks yeah. now. That's a really bad time. We're just talking no. about that yeah. mile qualifying it's so time. embarrassing. Yeah, it that's... really is, because I was like, when I ran that, I was like... Children was... run faster. Yeah. Literal yeah. children, yeah. Can, you, can your daughter run faster Yeah, than that? probably. <laughs> yeah, these spikes... Um, <laughs> no, I mean, so, like, why 5K it, 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 is that... More of an element of like, you know, you're going to be training towards that sort of fitness, so you yeah. might as well jump into 5K, or you're like, ah, hey, you know, 733, it's not crazy to say 13 flats a possibility. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the world champs is set up to double in the 15 and 5, um, and I don't, I'm not even got my eyes on that, but you can finish the 15 and then start your 5 career, in, in, you know, at Worlds this year and not worry about, you know, doing that. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. I just think that, again, it's a weakness. It's... You know, going through the rounds, you've just got to be strong. And so it's like the training is going to be there. So if we want to run one, we run one. If we don't want to, like, if, you know, if there's any niggles or anything, we won't do it. But we'll learn a lot from it. The training group, I mean, it's seen some changes, but it seems like 
everyone's elevated this year. Isaiah had a great race today. Yeah. And, like, so, I mean, how is everyone matching up in practice? It's been great. I think, you know, I have Isaiah and Henry living with me right now in my house. And, and, it's a nice uh, house, I heard. <laughs> it's all right. It's not the job. And uh, I'm just uh, – no, I've had to – I've had to make it look real nice because they're also not going to Airbnb off. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's been nice just kind of living with them and, and just learning because everyone has so many different things that they do. And I love like going to practice and learning from every teammate. And we had a good, good day today. We had, you know, great performances back in New Mexico, with them getting ready for USA's. And now I'm going to be there with a whistle and a stopwatch next week and, you know, helping them up. What, what, I guess for some of the fans wondering, like, what is Josh Kerr doing when – as Mag posts the OAC workout video, and then you start to see results pouring in from BU. Uh, how does Josh Kerr consume all of that? You know what? I think if I had Strava, you would have seen a pretty tough long run after BU. Real hard long run from a lot of guys on the team. And then the, the workout, like, I thought the workout was very good. I watched it. Um, you guys are getting some great content. But it wasn't something I was like, I shouldn't do that. Like, if you threw me in that workout, I was like, I would never be able to do that. And so, you know, it's everything was, a, you know, with a pinch of salt, really. Because it's like, you know, I can run, you know, 329, I can run 733, and I can run 145. Tell me, you throw me in that workout, and I can't hang. It's not really a thing. You've never had a problem of confidence. You've always, it's, it's back to freshman year yeah. of, you know, winning in Um, You know, you, you had that confidence. As you're getting older now, you've obviously had some great high moments, but you've also been knocked down and kicked a few times. How do you keep that confidence, and does the confidence look different? You know, is it it's, it's maybe not as cocky? I don't know. Like, yeah. like, we were friends. You're cocky. You were cocky. Yeah, no, yeah. I was. And I think <laughs> to a level, I mean, I would hate to be in the NCAA now. I mean, it takes incredible times and talent to, like, even just stand out with them. Um, but back in the NCAA, like, for me, I, I got a lot of lessons from O'Hare, and he used I thought to, you were going to say Lee Emanuel, because he well, did the well, same thing like, that you would do. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you've got to show no doubt that you are the man. You've yeah. got to show no doubt that you're there to do a job, and I think what Americans used to be bad at was they used to give a lot of respect for athletes that were good, so like a Cesarek. Like, listen, he was so phenomenal in college. But he got handed a couple of NCAA titles because of the respect that he was given by his fellow athletes. And so if you demand that respect in the NCAA, well, when you used to, maybe five years ago, you got given it a little bit. And so I knew that I was playing that a little bit to my advantage by showing that I felt like I was confident. And so, you know, it was, it's difficult to stand out in the NCAA now because you've got to be almost better than pros um, and more consistent across and then indoor and outdoor. It's always, always a championship around the corner. And so back then it was like I have to show the cockiness to make them respect me. So when I come it to work, it works so and I was well. <laughs> off, maybe I take that win. You know, I, I win those fifty fifties. But now it's like I have so much respect for my competitors that maybe it can maybe mature a little bit more. But um, I'm very confident that I'm well on my way to being top of the world at something, um, uh, um, world championships or Olympics. And so, yeah, I'm just it's that calm confidence of like I've been working for this my whole life, and uh, and it's starting to come to fruition a little bit i guess final question uh for me before we let you go is just sort of you know we like asking the athletes like why should they root for you and like we see the other guys jacob's got the medals and then and, and the oac guys He's got the oakley there. sunglasses you've got the sunglasses <laughs> <and> yeah <also laughs> the, the medal but what's your answer why should they root for you this season this season, you know, uh, you can see from today, I've been working on my weaknesses. I've been working extremely hard. I've been in every major final since 2019. It's my time. You know, I've been, I've been in the sport since I was nine years old, and uh, I've had an incredible support staff around me. I've got an incredible brand behind me, an honest, hardworking boy that's just looking for, for a world championship gold medal. So, you know, if you want to you wanna have a fun ride or someone who wants to have, you know, enjoyable races and race some of the best in the world, then jump on the hype train a little bit. It's like I always say, with Brooks on your feet, Oakley's on your eyes, and an Olipop in hand, the world is your oyster. It really is. It really is. I know the Oakley indoors is controversial, but try them on. You, you don't see anything dark. You're just, you're just making moves, man. You, your eyes, my eyes were doing this all day. No one saw it. I was just making little mini decisions, but no one saw it. But, yeah, I enjoyed having the Oakleys on a day. First time indoor racing with them, so. Brand. It's got to stay now. It's got to stay. I mean, with the new Brooks spikes and those, you can't lose. <laughs> and on the end, and, 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 and the uh, <laughs> race, you know how good I'm going to feel tomorrow? Yeah, so we'll go. Central Park? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. 
The fiber. You're going to love it. The fiber. Uh, yeah, Josh, thanks so much for stopping by. I mean, I know this was a, a controversial show for everyone last year. Yeah. I think, it yeah, seems cooler like, heads prevail. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't, I don't think you started anything. I, You know what? Like, I watched that last year, and I was, I was rather angry about it. <laughs> but I was like, just put it in your back pocket, and when the time comes, it's going to show them that you're good. And so, you know, today, you might not have been in the race, but Clacker and Jordy felt it a little bit. <laughs> And that's okay. But no, I think, you know, it's a, it was, I just enjoy the hype. I, like, whenever I say anything or Ollie says anything, it's one of those things where I'm just like, chuckle, but I'm like, I'm going to keep that in my back pocket a little bit. <laughs> All right, last question before we let you go. Drink yeah. something with alcohol in it. Throw some gin in your next Ollie Pop. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Um, by the end of your career, you will want to make your champ. 100%. I think, you know, the 3K was a play this year. Um, obviously, you know, Olympic year next year, but I will not finish my career without one of my commanders. I said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, this was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Really fun. Thank you. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. All right. Thanks to Josh Kerr for stopping by. Let's move on to breaking down some races. Let's start with our favorites. Caitlin, hit me. What was your favorite race of the day? My favorite race of the day was the men's. 60. Woo! I know y'all saw the hot stuff that was going on out there. What was there. happening? Let me tell. Let me break it down to what's happening. So you know we in New York, we in the city. Some people say it's a little dangerous. So when I heard pop, pop, pop three times, <laughs> I thought I was about to have to dip. But no, if y'all don't know, there was a couple of issues with the false starting. Um, so let me break it down. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> no, but let Genius. me tell you what was going on for real, for real. Um, so we thought there were some false starts going on. The officials got a little trigger happy, shot the gun three times. Then an official came out with a red card, and all you heard was, ooh, who's it for? And they stood in front of none other than the future 200-meter record holder, Noah Lyles. And the entire stadium is literally just booing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, snap. So there was a lot of controversy about whether or not he should have been disqualified because a lot of people was like, nah, like he flinched. I'm not going to hold you. I didn't see the start, so I don't know if he flinched or not. But there was a lot of people that had a lot of feelings about it, and the stadium was definitely showcasing how they felt. Um, even though Noah was disqualified, he He still, walked over. He, he walked over, but but then got back to the start line. And Unbel- what, I was like, what did he say? <laughs> what a lawyer. Like, <laughs> he decided to race well. anyway. Um, <laughs> And so then let's get into what happened with Noah Lyles back in the race. I called it last night. I told y'all Christian Coleman was going to win, and that is exactly what he did. Noah obviously did not have the best race of his life after hearing all of those pops, but the most interesting thing that I think that came out of this is who got second place, Travis Williams, Jamaican from U Albany. I'm shouting him out mainly because upstate New York, you know, I went to Ithaca for undergrad. I'm always going to give a shout out. But the kid ran a 659 against pros. I think his PR was like a high 6'6". Six, six. Um, so the fact that you came in here against Noah Lyles, Christian Coleman, and you got second, that's some crazy. It's some crazy. So I think he's excited for nationals and stuff because now he's on the leaderboard, and I think he's going to try to go out there and win it. Uh, the coolest part of that race, I think, afterwards, is just sort of the hush at the end. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we were all were like, ooh. And we were standing right next to none other than Kyle's favorite 100-meter sprinter, Marvin <laughs> Bracey. Yeah, like, after, <laughs> after, the, after the race finished, everyone's, like, standing around like, man, that's crazy. Like, they're all going head-to-head. And I was like, yeah, my favorite 100-meter runner wasn't even in there. It's like, oh, hey, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> but I had the chance to talk to Christian in the, uh, in the mix zone, and I said to him, first question was like, I mean, nice win, but what was the silencer all about? And he said, well, I haven't been on social media lately. Yeah. You've been quiet. Yes. Uh, but there's been a lot of talk. And even though... I'm not on. Uh, I'm not online. It's it gets to you at some point. Like you hear about it, and he said yeah. I just had to come out here and do my job, and hey, that was that. It was people 
last year saying that he should be removed from like the elite like men's hundred because he wasn't doing well and i'm sitting here looking like are you like serious like the dude made it all the way to world championships like what do you mean remove him so yeah. this, this is i love the, the back and forth that we had happened the last you know week specifically in the 60 so you have noah running big personal best taking down trayvon and then trey goes out to clemson <laughs> <laughs> and run six four two. Yeah, oh, yeah. six per- all time. Uh, number six all time. Big personal best. And it was really just like uh, a response. Like yeah. yes, you you beat me, but watch what I can do now. Right. now. And now it was Coleman and Noah's turn to rebuttal. And Noah wanted to run. I think this is really like an important part of why he decided to protest and run. He was like, I'm out here just getting reps in. Like that. it's important for me to, and he got a six, five, three. It was close to know, PR and all yeah. that. He was happy with the, the race itself. He's like, look, it's still the second fast ever, but I'm building towards outdoors. Important for me to still be able to come here and race. And I appreciate that. But now with Christian six, four, seven, he won like, you know, times yeah. we're talking like nothing in the 60. He won today. But now we have all three of them at USA's. It's about to get hot. Well, so I did ask Christian if he was running USA. Oh, please tell me he and said yes. I said yes. the fans want, and he says, well, I know it's what the fans want, but sometimes you got to listen to your coach. He's like, we're going to talk about it. He's like, so there is a chance we get. Oh, it. we got to get we got to get on him on social media. It sounds like he's not there. <laughs> but um, but a fun thing that Noah then said afterwards about Trey's race, he was like, look, you know. I wish we would have had a prelim today. This is a straight final situation. Yeah. And he was like, look, if, if I would have had two rounds before the final, like, traded, then maybe I, I go 6 4 too. And, uh, you know, it's just some food for thought. It was something. It's like we texted something yesterday where it's like, you know, the last couple of weeks we've been at the heart of just, like, we push content, we clip interviews, and we push them out, like, I think we're we're kind of a part of helping amplify some of the back and forth that's out there for and good and bad. For good and bad, I guess some people may argue. And and I was like, you know what? I like the drama. I'm here for it. I don't care if we're instigators in this, but <laughs> oh my uh, god, we got I'll, blood on our hands. You better stop before they do some more pops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, and th- I think two years ago, if you would have asked me what a good 60 meter time is, I would have like a, a rough idea. I'd be like six mid, I think, or I something. I like the event now. And I hope that other distance runners are getting into the 60 the way that we have the last year or so. And like now, like we have fully ingrained ourselves in 60 meter culture. We're part of it. And I'm loving it. We're big throws guys. I think this is the year we're big 60 guys. Yeah, we're the the year of the short sprint. (laughs) The year of the short sprint. Um, I will say it's amazing that these guys race each other as much as they do. And I think that it's a real treat for us as fans. And I don't think that this happened like 10 years ago. The level of these guys and how often they race each other, it's it's something that I think that we should really like, I don't know, amplify because it's yeah. special. Yeah. So I, I'm with you, Caitlin. The Men's 60 was a, was a really special event uh, today. Running down some of the other sprints, give us a recap of, of what else we saw today. So another sprint event that we saw today was the Men's 400. We were missing somebody. Mr. Cherry did not run the 400 today. Couldn't really get the scoop on why, but I saw him at practice yesterday, and he looked pretty fine. But he tweeted this morning he was ready to race. He did? Yeah. And then he wasn't here. <laughs> he got lost in the subway. The subway lost. is very confusing. There's an elevator. He got lost in the sauce, guys. But, yeah, Michael Cherry was not here today, unfortunately. But we did have an exciting race between between Jareem the Dream Richards and Noah Williams, who are both training partners. So that was exciting to watch. Um, I don't know if you know about last week, but they were pretty much chest hair for chest hair at the line. I guess Noah Williams is chest hair was longer last week and this year i mean this week it was a dream growth spurt <laughs> a little bit of a growth spurt more chest but yeah um that was an exciting race between the two um it was nice to see dream moving back on his feet as he is the reigning indoor world champion um outside of the men's 400 we also had the women's 300 which was super exciting because okay I'm pointing. Y'all can't see nothing, but I'm going to point anyway. So, like, over here in this corner, coming around this last hundred, I'm looking at Brittany and Abby, and I'm like, oh, snap. We were were watching this race together, and we were 
jumping on we top were, of each other. Like, we're like, we were scared because, listen, like I already told y'all, my girl Abby, she going to win everything she put her, her feet on, okay? So I seen Brittany coming up, and I was like, oh, snap. That's, that's, that's. She was, she was really doing what she did back in 2019 when she came and she won that silver medal. So I said, okay, let's go, let's go. So then Brittany's coming up, and I said, oh, snap. Now Brittany and Abby are stride for stride coming down the home stretch. Abby's and home stretch, though. Abby's home stretch. Was and great. I don't know what. Maybe Abby drunk an Olipop or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> I don't know what she did, but she hit the... Yes, I almost said break. She hit the <laughs> gas on the home stretch and blew straight past Brittany. But both of them had such an amazing race. I know Brittany definitely did because she was on the ground for at least 10 minutes after she was done racing. But let's not skip past the best part of all this. Abby Steiner, American record. 35-5-4. Oh, Lord. Me and Kyle were trying to call world record last night. It's okay. It didn't happen, but it's coming soon. Okay. Hey, I give you guys props. You guys said, like, don't sleep on Brittany Brown. You were woke to be. Yeah, well, I was woke on Brittany Brown because she was stepping with Abby. I said, oh, snap. Let's go. Okay? <laughs> Good indication for, like, the 200. You know, because she was there with 200. Yeah, she was, she at 200. was there. She was there. She was there. And she, you know, twenty one nine nine for two hundred. Like, where are we going this year? Now, if, if if you're running with Abby that late into the race, but Abby's home straight away. The way she came off that turn, it was, was lightning. Absolutely ridiculous. But this just shows how hard it's going to be to make the two hundred team as well because Abby is playing no games. Obviously, Jenna is never playing any games. Brittany's not playing games. Gabby Thomas is back. I mean, there is literally. It's going to be about who's going to show up to USA's on the final and be able to make it happen. So. And, and through all of this, like, we've got, I don't know, some of, what do you think Chillian Fraser-Price is thinking watching a performance she like this? She's probably at home eating her curry goat. She's not worried. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is probably at home chilling. No, nah, not even the curry goat. That KFC that's sitting down there by her track, she's probably chilling right yeah. now, having a great time. She's like, I'm not worried about them. I mean. I'll see you I'll, outdoors. Yeah, you'll see him outdoors. Don't worry. My my girls is cooking, but I know you cooking too, so we're not gonna trip. We're not gonna trip. But with Abby, this she's no stranger to like indoor American right. records. She got the two hundred on NCA last year. Like we talk about that. Or maybe not. Cause yeah, I mean so. she she is a master turn runner. It seems yeah. like she can really get around an indoor track. Well, it's pretty good outdoors as well. Uh, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, women sixty, Aaliyah Hobbs for the win, and you also facility called, record. I called that too. Um, I listen. I was three for three. Okay, I don't know when I started losing based off of the picks that we picked. Distance running, you didn't do too high. Oh, don't don't even worry about that. Courtney Wayman won in my head. But anyway, <laughs> so Aaliyah Hobbs coming out victory. Mill Rose Games champion. I don't know if y'all checked out my interview on Twitter. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube as soon as the internet starts working and my phone stops dying. But um, she had some drip around her neck. Uh, so I knew she was coming in hot. She was going to be stepping on this 60. I was a little scared at first because people were putting pressure on her. When she actually ran that 698 and that 70 back in Arkansas a couple weeks ago, there was really nobody with her. Like, she got out the block, she ran her race, and there was nothing for her to worry about. But today, for at least half the race, there were definitely people on her, and she really had to make sure that she was able to keep form and pull away. So it was interesting and exciting to see that. And I called this, too. Samari Davis was going to get second. And, and Well, nobody didn't say that wasn't going to happen. But I, I just... <laughs> You, you just know, feel I'm, good right now. I still feel good about that because now it's two for two. Uh, but overall, it was a really, really exciting race. No popping of the guns. Nobody was trigger happy. Thank goodness. It was a smooth race for everybody. And honestly, it was just great to see everybody out there. All right. Hit us at the women's 60-meter hurdles. Devane Charles. Wait, 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 wait. One second. We got to say this. Otherwise, we're going to regret it. Chaunty Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. I think she said it was also a national record. 716 lowered the yes. national record. She did. We like, are. So, look, we had a lot of controversy. I'm part of it. The whole discussion of high school runners jumping into professional races. Nicholas Harbor had a, a rough day in the men's yeah. six. <laughs> but but Chaunty was fifth. Yeah. And yeah. she. Melissa yeah, Jefferson improved over camp. improved over last week, so yes. good to see that. But Chaunty was fully in it, seven one six, great to see. All right, go on, Chris. <laughs> Women's sixty meter hurdles. 
I tell y'all, if they in the Kentucky camp, they go win. And Miss Devin Charles hit K with the heat. Okay, so when I talked to her, she was like, I stumbled a little bit out of the block, so she felt like the first part of her race wasn't exactly perfect. But she did still manage to come across in 791. And let's talk about twin telepathy here. Um, um, Masai across the country ran 792 or 794 this exact same weekend. So it's so exciting to see these training partners really going head to head in practice all the time. But then also, iron sharpens iron. They both came out here, both ran, well, they didn't both come out here. Devin came out here, and Masai was eclipsing, <laughs> both running something hot. Um, so that was nice to see. Tonia Marshall getting second. Um, overall, the race, I think, was really, really hot, and Devin just found a way to pull it together and make it work despite her stumbles. All right, let's quickly recap what took place in the field events. Katie Moon finally got did the it. win, the Millrose Games win. Uh, 41 clearance. Bridget Williams, who won last week, was second. Uh, let's, we had the shot put, which was pretty interesting, uh, this one, because they were alternating, and both the favorites ended up winning, with Chase Ely winning in a world lead, 2003, beat record, facility record. Then you've also got uh, Ryan Krauser, world lead, meet record, facility record, 2258. Can we tell the people what his new technique was so i didn't get a chance to, to look at it closely oh, but it's it, kind of like a discus sort of he started thing. like in the corner of say, the circle he did say that like uh if he was working off of a discus ring it would be much easier because he's just the biggest guy out there and so he's always had to be constrained to the shot put ring and so he's testing something new out work today because and if he did stick to his word that it was on the second throw that's where he had his farthest mark today um but he's experimenting. I mean, he had two uh, two fouls after that, and so this man is taking risks this year to try and see if he could better that world record outdoors. So for sure, um, exciting to see that. Kyle, do we want to move into some of the? Let's do oh, the wait, men's eight hundred. Did you catch the the high school boys four by two? Uh, did it in a way that everybody was falling. <laughs> We predicted this. Talk about being clairvoyant. Okay. We said this is the craziest race. The most dangerous race in <laughs> all of track and field. It is not javelin. It is not povo. It is not whatever you're thinking in your brain right now. It is quite literally the boys 4x2, specifically high schoolers. I don't know what is up with them. But every time they get the baton, somebody's falling, scraping knees. I don't even know what's going on. But listen, parents. Don't let your kids run the 4 by 2 don't, don't, let your kids, don't let them do it. You think football is bad, but the 4 by 2 is way worse. I swear that the armory, we've had fights break out in 4 by 2 Wait, 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 wait. They I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Brian Benjamin went viral at some point because his he team. Yes, the team, because it's, they, I don't even know. Mount Vernon jumped down. Oh, my Mount. God, yes. They jumped down. They were fighting. Like, it was. Maybe the armory is the most dangerous place for track and field. <laughs> I've seen we crazy things here. happen in the 4 by 2 Most underrated event in track and field. I think it should be an Olympic event. You've got to be 17 or younger to compete in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like the opposite of gymnastics. Um, and you get extra points for every person that you knock over. <laughs> Men's 800. Is that your favorite event? I mean, I think One we should up. save yeah. everyone probably. The mile. Yeah, the mile. I mean, I'm biased, so. Second favorite event, the 800. Uh, we called it. Yeah. We called it. They're feeling very validated. I'm sure we were ahead of Vegas on the odds on this one. No Cabet looked unbelievably smooth. Yeah. But we have to give big up to Isaiah Harris for making for this it. race what it was. I mean, point six nine through the 400. He was in first. And 117 through 600. And look, Noah was waiting in the wings. And... It, it, I'm sure Zay was hoping that he could have pulled out the win, but he was pumped after. 145-6, an indoor personal best. I think ever since what happened to him last year at the World Indoor Championship, it's been a battle. Like, you know, hurting his hamstring there, getting healthy, but it seems like he's only come back stronger. And I know he's really, he was really fired up about it in our interview. Uh, no Quebec, though. I mean, world lead, personal best, 144-98, indoor personal best. Just look. I mean, he's a beautiful runner. And I think it's probably the first time that a lot of people really paid attention to that. Yeah, this was this race was, I mean, the two guys who made it out unscathed were Noah Cabet and Isaiah Harris because everyone else behind them got caught up in some sort of tie-up where 
you know, Bryce Hoppel was taken out of the race after about 150 meters to go and, you know, faded all the way to the back. Cade was struggling with the ankle injury. Um, it was messy. It was messy. I mean, it was, it was Clayton Murphy kind of it, it had a solid showing, 146, but definitely not what he wanted. I mean, he, he walked through it in the mix and explained that it. it was just chaotic. Yeah, I mean, this is why people take over 800s and learn how to lead them because there's no problems up front. And so, you know, Isaiah and Noah really benefited from that, from getting out of the chaos, and they persevered. I mean, 144.98, no joke. Uh, Noah Cabet is going to be a guy we're going to be seeing a lot of on the scene in the United States here. Uh, keep an eye on him. Yeah. He said he was dangerous. He's just, he's just a kid. Just yeah. a kid, but he's got big shoes, and he's selling them. I got a text from Hannah Bornstein, who's one of the members of Magic Boost, and she interviewed uh, Noah Cabat yesterday, and she was like, hey, you know, I've got some fun tidbits of him to share. He basically said he wanted to come to the United States for a while because he was training too much in Kenya. I hate he, when that happens. He would do long runs as marathoners in the morning, strength work in the midday, 10K runs in the afternoon, but also his, pre, uh, his prescribed pre-race routine was really, really long, he was arri- arriving to race as tired and was without power, is how he put it. So he wanted to come to the U.S., get better use of physio, gym, massage, better training, and that's why he joined the Union Athletics Club. He was pretty confident heading into to this race. Um, and that the last thing is, he loves wrestling a lot, specifically John Cena. So, <laughs> hell John yeah. Cena! He's, he's, I mean, you gotta forget, he's a kid. John Cena was at the meet. You just didn't see him. There was a lot of Shut celebs up, Kyle. at the meet today. A lot of celebs at the meet. There was a, there was a lot of celebs. For we, sure. had, we had Dr. Fauci in the house. <laughs> yeah. We had. Uh, he's a celeb. <laughs> Mac, are you arguing? It's kind of weird to call him a celebrity. <laughs> he's a celeb. He's got I think, a movie coming out. I don't he's think that that's Dr. a good Fauci. thing. What is he? Is he? He's not a politician, is he? What he's. He's, he's definitely an influencer. He's, he's, a guy that, like, he's the guy that looks at the germs and makes sure the germs don't spread. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, who else do we have? We have Bob Beeman. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this building. There was a Bob lot of Kersey germs. Bob was around. Yeah, Shakari Richardson was in the house. You yeah. got the chance to talk to Shakari. Yeah, I did. I talked to Shakari. She came with her uh, her twin, TT. They're both in the city. I was like, what y'all doing here? They're like, we on vacation. Fashion week. Fashion week. They did go shopping. Are you going out with them tonight? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you what? 21? How old is Can you be cool? I'm literally 22. I, I was close. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, it was so awesome to see both of them in the house today. Literally just chilling, relaxing, and getting a chance to watch the meet. I think that's what's fun um, about seeing those two here. And not even just those two. Vernon and Marvin were here, too. And they yeah. weren't even racing. So it was nice to have athletes here supporting the sport despite not racing. All right. I let me see Vernon yeah. here. All right, Vernon and Marvin. Marvin in particular, because after the false starts in the 60s went off, I was like, they should just empty the lane and then dim the lights and then just Hail Mary by Tupac starts playing. And then it's like, is that Marvin Brady? It's a walkout song. Here comes Marvin Brady. That would be amazing, but unfortunately it didn't happen. I showed up and I see... Vernon Norwood, I'm like, is that Vernon Norwood? He's wearing the Sidious Mag hat. Yeah, yeah. we and him were twinning today. There's not, there's uh, the amount of messages we have received about, about the these I hats. Heart track and field hat. People, Chris handmade all of these hats. <laughs> yeah, I did. But you gave your hat to Vernon. I did. You know, he's yeah. gonna protect the head. He's bald. Oh, yeah, he it's sunny bald. day. <laughs> it's, it's a sensitive spot there, okay? <laughs> That's basically why I gave it to him. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, all right, let's get back to 600, out women 600. Women um, 600. Oh, yeah. You know, this one came in with a lot of hype with a thing going after that world record and everything. Props to Shamir Little. But Shamir oh, made wow. this a race, and she took it out. And AJ just, you know, I think had AJ attached maybe a little sooner – and that would have been within grasp, but there was it was a gap. And but when Ajay passed, she, she oh, moved. Oh yeah, I'm just loving the way Ajay is trending so far this year. And she looks better and better every week. She does. I yeah. think the other part of it too is like I don't know. Do we start to float around that she might be one of the smartest racers in the world? I don't think that's like a new take no. <laughs> that has been known for an extremely <laughs> long time. I just, yeah, where have you been, Craig? Yeah. It's been on display just even more so in the last three weeks. In particular, uh, Boston was more so like I, don't, I, I thought she was going to run away with it and win no matter what. The 1K at Dr. Stander was fascinating. And then today, just letting Shamir go and then timing her kick perfectly. Yeah. Brilliant. I think you just yeah. started watching Ajay race then. <laughs> 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 We've been 10 years here at the Armory. Ajay's never lost. 
she's consistently been one of the smartest racers out there. And I mean, she, she demonstrated today. Look, do I wish she was in that mile? <laughs> she <laughs> yeah. knows I do, but um, no, she looks great. And I think for her, it's just building, building there. Look, I just someone who gets up for global championships and there's no global championships this indoor season. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a big outdoor season from her with a little, a slightly less emphasized indoor season without any championships. Yeah. I got a chance uh, to talk to Shamira when she was done, and I think the biggest thing for her is that we've been seeing her run like a lot of eight and like 600s over the past year or two, and she says for her it's a really big confidence booster. So she had no issue like going out there and literally just taking it out. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure she knew IJ was like on her heels. I, I knew she knew that it was coming. But for her, it's all about building up for that 400 and 400-meter hurdles that she's got yeah, coming out this season. I wanted her to commit to the 800. Oh, Lord, no. She, she's still a hurdle girl at heart. All right, let's talk women's 3K. We saw an American record fall. Alicia Monson just put the hurt on the whole entire field. It was like stuck to the pacer, then just squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And, and it, you know, it took a toll on the women who went with the hot pace early on. We saw Elise Cranny on her heels. We saw Ellie Hennis. Props to Ellie Hennis, who was like someone who we kind of overlooked while we were uh, previewing the event. We forget how well she ran last year in, in Berlin. She closed unbelievably well, like, last season out. And yeah. now we're picking up right where we left off. Yeah, so, I mean, there's something special happening in that group out in Flagstaff. But Alicia Monson was just a master class in this race. With 400 meters to go, she knew it was going to be very close. It was just under the previous record, so 825.05. A really fun graphic that I don't know if they're showing on TV, but they have it here in the armory, is essentially the predicted time yeah. that someone's going to race. Is that a shout-out to Dippin? Probably. Probably a Dippin. Uh, I, I think that's him, yeah. Yeah, maybe Cody, Dippin, whoever. They, it was awesome. It's super fun. Like, along the way, you're, and Alicia's race was probably one of the best examples yeah. of that being super, super relevant because, you know, they went out. Uh, the first 1600 was 432. It was a few seconds slower than they were hoping for. And then she just started winding it up. And we just watched that tick down little by little. And with 100 meters to go, you're like, she's got to lean. Like, it's going to be tight. And so, 825 a new American record. Just, what do you. Uh, what do you do against that? How do you, what do you, she just winds it up until there's no one left. And you know who ran a very fascinating race? It was right behind her, Whitney Morgan. Uh, she did not go out with the Pacers ahead of time. And I actually was right next to her waiting uh, for her to come into the mix zone to do an interview. And Coach Jill G. Taylor was right next to her. She's like, I told you to do that. You, you listen to the plan. It was let them go. You will come uh, you, you'll scoop them up when the time is right and she did that the bodies were coming back to her she ended up finishing second in, in 8 30 really solid race this is now the second race where we've seen this exact same top three of alicia monson whitney morgan and caitlin tui we saw this at the mile uh two weeks ago at dr sander and this is a you know things are going very well for whitney morgan we should not forget about her come out through season when she you know probably focuses on the the 5k i just want to give some praise quickly to caitlin because Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Both, <The other>. Caitlin. <laughs> um, you know, I think she's consistently now come to the Armory and excelled here. Yes. And her ability to channel the fact that she's having a homecoming into positive energy is really a testament to, like, how well she's transitioned from high school to college and I think bodes really well for the future. I mean, look, other athletes, they're getting swarmed with interviews after races. I mean, Caitlin has the local news out here. Like, we have lots and lots of local New York media outlets that were here to cover Caitlin. And no one else has that. The New York like, Times was here. For no, no, Caitlin. like, legitimate. I, I mean, like, the, the local yeah, yeah, yeah. Westchester, Low Rockland, right. Low Hud. Like, I mean, people who have watched her race for years and years are so interested in her. And, you know, so many fans here have watched her for years. And it's just really difficult. We've seen many collegiates come to Milrose under the bright lights and be exposed to, you know, saying, Hey, you're not necessarily ready yet to be on this stage. I know you can run fast in a time trial, the last chance me, but can you do it versus the best of the best? And Caitlin, 835 NCAA record, but even more so is just that consistency now that she's established and also just the way she handles herself in this environment. Didn't she break that record by like five or six seconds? It's a, no one's ever heard of that previous record. Obliterated. Anymore. 
So <laughs> it's a rough huge, day for cruisers. Yeah. <laughs> huge props, Caitlin, Dewey. And I mean, you just go down the list and people had some really great races. Um, so on a national record in, from Mexico, Laura Galvin in sixth place. I mean, literally the results are uh, American record, PB, 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 national record, PB, PB. It was a great race. Yeah, it was awesome. So. Well, the rabbit did their, their job this time. Yeah, yes. look, I, my, I today was a good day of rabbit. I think in the 3K, rabbits are regularly assigned too quick of a pace. And 90% of the time, if rabbits are a few seconds off in the 3K, it's for the best interest of everyone. I mean, ultimately, at least, she, you know, she ended up uh, closing it down. I think it was 245 for the last 1K. And her final 200s were 33, 32, 31. Crazy. He's definitely missing some screws because yeah. <laughs> ain't no way you can just do that. Um, men's 3K, we kind of broke it down with Josh. Josh won 7.30. Anything we want to talk about another Josh? Uh, you know, I think Josh got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's gone, yeah. Uh, no, Luis was impressive. Luis was great, yeah. And he gave a great interview afterwards. And he's coming around. He's going to open up in the 10 in a few weeks. In yeah, his first 10 of his career. Uh, all signs point to him being good at it. Yeah, no, uh, I trust Mike Smith. Uh, uh, Joe Klecker, 734. Cooper Tier, 734. Cooper had the hardest job out there today. From the front. And I, look, like, he was the one up front pushing the pace, hanging on that rabbit. And, you know. Hey, shout out to the rabbit, AJ. Shout out, AJ Good did. Job. Now, back to back, unbelievable rabbiting jobs. This is the, the go to in the 3K and the way that Sawinski is in the middle distance. Um, but no, Cooper is 734, and for me, this is this is a big deal because what that says is he's having a good first year with Bowerman. And a lot of times what we see out of athletes when they join Bowerman is a good second year because it takes a while. And what that says to me is that Cooper has come in and he has immediately adapted to this whole new training system and that 10-plus miles of work with guys like Mo Ahmed. Like, I mean – 734 in the middle of a block like that in which other guys are not racing. So what, what did the last couple of weeks look like? Really, really, really like Cooper. I think he is going to be the one that people are going to overlook right now and how big of a deal that is. Yeah. I mean, the solid showing, I guess, is, or the rest of the field, everyone ran very well today. I mean, Jordy Beamish lowering his national record from, from last year, but it, this year got him sixth place. Just overall, I guess, like, the field was just elevated. Elevated throughout the entire race. I mean, look, we're not even talking about Dylan Jacobs. He yeah, ran 736. He narrowly missed Drew Bosley's NCAA record. Would have been an NCAA record as of two weeks ago. Um, Can't wait for that race and indoors. I mean, it's just really good stuff. How often do you see races where everyone's like having like a personal bets? Because on the men and women's 3K, like everybody has PV or world lead or something. It like is that. crazy. It's middle road. And I think like a lot of people just like a lot of focus is on this meet. There's no world indoor meet taking place. So uh, this is people's peak. And more so than the sprints, the difference in the distance events is like if a race is set up really well and the opportunity is there, you can ride the train. And it's like, I guess I'm in eighth and we're all going to run fast. Whereas in the sprint, it's probably slightly less common unless you're like at altitude or something. <laughs> and, and in which, like, you know, the people next to you are really, really helping you. So we do see it. This is like an exceptionally unbelievable form person, chart that we got. Unless, but Unless they didn't finish, like everyone got a PB. Yeah, this was set up well, though, for it. All right, we got two more races to talk. We've got the women, Wanamaker, Mile, Laura Muir for the win, 420. Last I called week. it. Yeah, you called yeah, it. I sure did. So the Brits were coming. The Brits were coming, and they came, and they messed up this house good. Uh, in New England. <laughs> we're not in New England. We're not Wait, in New England. New York's not a part of New England? No. no. Oh, I take that back. Cut yeah. that out, Mac. It's confusing because York is in England, but no, we're um, – Laura Muir got on the rabbit. Charlene did a great job bringing them through in 208 high. And then it settled a little bit. And Laura got passed. And it was like, what is going to happen? Josette was the one who made the big move at 400 meters to go. And, I mean, this, she was second place last year. She was like, this, this is the move. This is it. I'm finally going to win this thing. And uh, we don't really see this during outdoor season where someone like, Laura Muir can drop back that far and then still claw their way back for the win, but somehow did it. Do you have a split on the final 
two hundred. The okay. final two hundred looks like it was thirty point nine. Yeah. So I mean, fast. Nothing. Like, nothing revolutionary. Nothing earth shattering, but very very solid. Um, but I just think the ability, and this is a test. This is not a shock for us. There's a reason that Laura Muir is Laura Muir. She's tough as nails. I mean, but the ability to get past and get swallowed up a little bit and then latch on, it's tough. It's, and she did it. And, you know, especially when you're trying to push the pace and someone comes and passes you. Uh, really impressive. I think she looked better than she did last week in the 3K. Yeah. Nice progression there. But Gisette, from an American standpoint, unbelievable race. It wasn't a question joining OAC, uh, you know, a couple months ago. Great move, I think. And I was talking to husband Robbie Andrews after the race, and if she would have raced. If she would have just raced one time before this, then maybe she would have been sharp enough to to take that win. Um, I guess she had like a little bit of a hamstring thing, and that's why it was a late scratch for Dr. Sander. But I mean, Jersey girl, she's gonna win this one day. One day, the home crowd's gonna go wild. Uh, last thing on Josette, I, she is thinking of running BU Last Chance. She wants something fast to come out of this today was very fast too but i think she wants uh a little bit more because i mean the last the thing that's missing from this performance is is pb and and the win but it's coming yeah for sure and um i mean you go down again like this is another example of you go down that list and there are some really impressive performances katie snowden in third place uh, that's like, exactly what i wanted to shout out under armor 421 one i mean like like shout out to under armor because they, Two podium finishes in the miles. They, yeah, you know, we're going to get to that in a second, but the really, really strong race. I think Katie is someone that we are, we need to start paying more attention to overall. And when you look at the list of names of people that she just beat, um, you know. Team GB is so deep in the mile in the 15th. It is. I mean, look, they don't hand out teams like they used to anymore, but she, she's got a 402 1500 best, and that's. That's gone this year. I think she's she's ready to make that leap up. They got something going. Lucia Stafford in fourth place of the PV 422 was right up there. I think with with the, with the rest of them early on in the race, pushing from the front. Oh, all right, uh, all right. Well, let's move to the men's want to make her mile to close this one out. Hold on one last. I'm just looking at this. I know you want to jump. Ninth place last was 428 in the mile. A lot of trees being planted. I think everyone already had a tree for the most part, but like it's really rare to see like everyone have such a good day. So shout out to our ladies. That was awesome. All right. Sorry. Go on, Chris. Men's Wanamaker Mile. This one did not disappoint. They're playing what was it by M and M playing during that race? It was I don't like even know. uh it was like the it wasn't until I collapsed. Yeah. But whatever. Oh, oh, yeah, my God. lights come out. <laughs> Max, do you have do you, do you have it? You know no. what you know what I'm asking for. Do you have it? Oh, oh the God. The graphic? No, not the graphic. The goose. Oh, oh the goose head. Um, it's, it's bring the out bag. the goose head. This is a really fun story, and I, I told you guys this. So, Kaylin, back in the day, this this meet used to be at Madison Square Garden. I don't know if you knew that. Um, Why was it I there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were born, seven, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they used to always do the national anthem right before the men's want to make her mile. And a few years ago, there was this bar called Coogan's rest in peace. And we we're hanging out after, you know, drinking some Coogan's ale and Johnny Gregoric's wife, Amy. And I think I told the story last year because it needs to be told was like, Hey, Ray, like meet our Hector. Why don't you guys do the national anthem before the women's mile? And he was like, "That's a great point. I don't know." <laughs> and so, national anthem before the women's mile, no longer just before the men. Yeah. All right. So in the men's race, it was the, the music blasting, the on guys going right to the front. No Wasn't one there listened like to fireworks or something somewhere. Yeah, the, 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 the cool fire lights that uh, for the main entrance, yeah. but then. The fire department here? Yeah. No, actually, there's those, a fire hose right there. The, uh, those are cold sparks, actually. It's really interesting. Huh. Um, tell me more. <laughs> I'll tell you more afterwards. <laughs> uh, no one listened to you. Well, Cole okay. Walker, so Cole Walker was out of the race due to uh, an Achilles little flare up or something yeah. like that. Um, so he couldn't fall on the sword. I also, I just want to call out a little bit. You know, we Got made those back. predictions. I um, made predictions beforehand. 
and the thing that sometimes people don't know is sometimes we hear a little, we hear some things before we're making predictions. So on the women's side, Sinclair had bowed out due to food poisoning. food poisoning. On the men's side, we had heard there was a possibility. So I just want to throw that out there. That it was like, right after our show. Uh, that's recorded. when you heard? Yeah. That's when I heard about Cole. Yeah. So anyway, so the so problem is the outside alley – Made that impossible. When they're all in the outside alley, like you have two turns to get out. My idea, straight out the window. <laughs> like you have all the time in the world. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. So Sawinski takes them out, goes through uh, 800 and 152 in there, just lined up. I believe, the, what was the order? Um, I mean, that? Mario, I did, was not expecting Mario to be the one. Yeah. Ollie, it was Mario, Yarid, Ollie. Ollie then makes a move, moves up towards the front. Yard goes with him. Yard tries to make the pass. Ollie blocks it for a bit. And then with about, what, 150, 125 meters, to, uh, uh, 225 meters to go, that's when Yard, you, you visibly saw it. was like, he's moving. It was a wild move. Um, yeah, you know, it was interesting because it didn't seem like after the race that they had as much of a plan as maybe as I thought. It seemed like Mario just ended up being the guy a little bit more accidental. Uh, did you get that impression as well? And also, I do just want to call out. They all sat down individually with Jason. So I told you that's what happens. I and mean, he said sit third to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, yeah, it, it seems like that's what, yeah. what took place. I get very self-conscious, by the way, when I say Mario's name. Because I, I know that we got that New York pronunciation. <laughs> um, and you're Spanish. Well, I don't know how they do it in Spain. But, anyway, every time I say it, uh, I'm like, coming out. So anyway, Mario. Um, takes it. I mean, I thought it was his interest to slow it down, but, you know, it, it benefited him to get out. I mean, 152.99. It was actually funny. I saw Sawinski after the race. He was like, 152.99, too fast. As, because he was supposed to go 153. A master craftsman. But Mario ended up getting the national record for Spain in fifth, but he did fall on the sword a little bit. The guy who was just stalking the envoys was Neil Gorley right from the start. He looked really good. He looked very handsome up there. We saw him last weekend in New Balance. And I kind of had this idea in my head of, like, if this thing goes slow, then Neil's going to surprise everyone. And I think can – I am be honest. I didn't see in a race that was one in 347 that Neil would be second. I thought I, – I had this idea in my head, and it's because of the way he always runs British champs, and he's got this great – he's a great, great championship racer. That in my head, I think he's got a 332-1500 PR, so I need to get rid of this. That Neil's a guy who thrives in a slower situation. Guess not. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. Ollie Hoare went with the pace and then just kind of faded a little bit in the final. But, I mean, ran the same exact time that he did last year. Tied his own national record. But today, only good enough for third place. Because, I mean, Yard Nagoose was just unreal. 347 shot. It just, Closing in on the – he got the American record through 1,500. I mean, he destroyed every American record. I mean, so, truly unbelievable. And it was kind of funny because in the post-race, someone had asked about the American record outdoors, and he didn't even know what it was. For the mile. <laughs> yeah. Alan West. Yeah, yeah, he didn't know. Um, which it's like he was dangerously close to getting. The, the, all right, so the point I want to call out about this race is that when Sawinski stepped off, there was a moment of lag in which it was ambiguous as to who was going to keep this thing going. And I think that moment of doubt and that like 200 there where no one was like, I'm going to start pushing probably was the difference between the world record or not because Yared had so much left in the tank. His last 400 meters or his, his let's say it's just his last 200 meters. He went 1297, 1297. So a 20, Five high, last 200 to run 347. A 25 second 200 is something you do in a tactical race, not in a 347 race. So, I mean, I just don't know. I, I am never doubting Yared again. I think I've already formally apologized on behalf of everyone who doubted Yared's decision to not run the Olympics. It was like, oh, what, what do you mean? Like, this is the highlight of your career. You got to just start. It's like, no. You never know if you'll get back. Yeah, to like, no, again. Yara's going to win the Olympics. <laughs> like, definitely a good move on him. Like, you, much smarter than us. It, it is. It, it was fascinating just kind of when you take a step back now and realize Yara has never competed on the global stage. Didn't do the Olympics because uh, of the injury once he got there. 
didn't qualify for the world championships last year. I did have to ask Ollie. I was like, do you think someone like Jakob has taken notice? He's like, oh, yeah, he knows. He knows at this point. Uh, Yari is going to go to Madrid to run the 15. We asked if he, if he would be interested. In, I asked him if he was like getting ready to, you know, if they excited to eventually race Jakob. He said yes. And then someone followed up like, any chance you jump up to 3K? And he said it was one and done. No, so he, the world record indoors for 1500, which is what he's going to tackle in uh, Madrid, is 330.6 from Jakob just last year. Has to be under threat. It's crazy to be uh, like, He's on, guys. I guess have been talking national records, national records. The conversation is elevated now. Like you have to start talking world records with Yarid in the camp. The uh, goose is coming. The goose is loose. Thin loose. The goose is. You can't put the goose in a cage. Um. Anything else that stood out to you when you talked to him? I think ultimately, he's I mean, so chill. He's so chill. I asked him if he gets nervous. He was like, "Nah, I'm pretty chill." I mean, the dude is just. He's he's got the mindset seemingly down. Like he is so cool, calm, and collected. He's a silly goose. He's a silly goose. He's having a never good time. Never going to be a dentist. He's never going to dental school. <laughs> he thinks school. he's going to dental school in a couple of years. I think this may have helped his resume, but he's not going. He's he's staying with us. Um, I did call out Kajelka's three forty seven as being boring. This three forty seven was anything but. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Uh, all right. I think. Final takeaways? What do we think? That's like we got U.S. champs. We've got Birmingham. It's so hard We've got to even. <laughs> yeah. We've got a new correspondent out in Europe who's going to be helping us out. But like, Stay tuned on that. We're going we're gonna to have a new correspondent. We've got a new correspondent. Testing things out in the mix zone and leaving in Birmingham. But uh, overall, this meet always top notch. Top, 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 top notch. Again, it's we, the we best said, of track and field. We said it. Uh, in our podcast last week where it's like if you ever have a fringe fan to bring them out to meet like this, there was probably a couple of those in here today. Definitely walking out of here being like, I need more track and field. I have a a quick story on that topic. Uh, A woman that I coach, a neighbor of mine, said that she was going to bring her kids to come out to Milrose, and she's like, do I need to, like, bring snacks or, like, an iPad? Like, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Are they going to get thirsty? Or is there... Is their gut health going to be poor? <laughs> and uh, I was like, trust me, like, as soon as your son gets in this building, like, he does not need an iPad. He doesn't need snacks. And she texted me saying that within five minutes of being here, he said, I want to run in Milrose one day. And that's like an eight-year-old kid. So the next that's Eric Holt. What, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to just get someone in the building, and they'll be hooked forever. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it. Uh, for this episode of after the final lap from the Milrose games. Unfortunately, we couldn't be live. We had a couple technical difficulties, but if you stuck with us, thank you for watching. Uh, quick shout out. We just got some results in from B, uh, from BU. Our boy, Gary Martin, 356. Oh, oh. Sidious Mag Zone. Gary Martin. Your personal best. Can't fire the intern now. No, Gar- <laughs> Gary's doing well. He got himself another week of the internship. Uh, I'm Chris Chavez. This is Caitlin Hutchison. That's Kyle Merber. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Might be outdoor season next time. Oh, we'll be at uh, New Balance International. I think that's the next time we'll be live. Thanks for watching. Let's try.